I want to walk through what I believe is a great resource to help you build your incident response skills. John Strand, who is the lead course author of the SANS Institute's SEC 504 class, Hacker Tools, Techniques, Exploits, and Incident Handling, has made available some resources for that class for free at tinyurl.com 504-extra. One of those resources is a quick lab that starts a few non-malicious processes on your system and then asks you some questions to help practice your IR skills. So I figured we will walk through it together. So over here on the Windows VM, let's load up an administrative command prompt. And because this does start some listening processes, let's go ahead and temporarily disable the Windows firewall to avoid any kind of conflict there. So NetSH ADV firewall set all profiles state off. Now let's change to the desktop directory where I've got the 504lab.exe. Let's go ahead and spawn a second administrative command prompt because we'll need that in a second. And we'll launch the lab. First thing it's going to do is ask us to run netstat-nao to look at the system before it starts the fake malicious processes. Uh, this brings up an important point because you can't possibly expect to find evil if you don't know what normal looks like to begin with, right? Now, most people are familiar with running netstat-an, but when you add the O option, you actually can see the PIDs associated with those listing and established connections. And in fact, you can add a B as well and actually see the binary or the executable associated with any of those things. So let's run netstat-anbo, pipe it through more. And I can tell you these are quite normal. Uh, you might notice there is a Windows SSH service listening, which may not be normal for some people. Um, we've got NetBIOS, we've got SMB, and some various other high order ports. But all of this uh, is normal on this clean VM. So we'll go ahead and press enter to continue. And it tells us that a TCP backdoor is being started, and it wants to know what port that particular backdoor is listening on. So let's run this again. And when we do, one of the things we'll notice is that there seems to be a PowerShell process listening on some random high-order port. Uh, this is not normal, as we normally don't have random PowerShell processes listening for incoming connections. But yet, here one is. It appears to be listening on 49688. So we'll type that in, and now it wants to know the PID, or the uh, process ID of that backdoor, because we've used the O option. The rightmost column actually has PID listed, and we can see that it's 4612. So this is pretty straightforward so far. Now we're being asked for the PPID, or the parent process ID, which is not on the screen. One of the ways we can get this is using the Windows Management Instrumentation command line, WMIC. And if we do WMIC process, where process ID equals 4612, we'll get a bunch of information here. And yes, we know the Windows firewall's off, because we turned it off. Now, this is not pretty, but what if we actually say get parent process ID? When we do that, we get a nice little line that says parent process ID, 5640. And that is the answer to the question. Now it wants us to run netcat to actually grab the flag printed when we connect to that port. Well, I don't have netcat for Windows installed, but I do have bash for Windows, uh, which is an awesome feature. So if we netcat to localhost on what port was it? 49688. We'll actually get the text. The flag is black, followed by some <clears throat> random numbers here. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And now it says, what port is the, uh, the process listing on now? Well, if we run netstat again, we'll notice that there's another PowerShell process listing. The first one was associated with 49688. So let's look at this and see if we can figure out what the new one is. Well, looks like what we've got here is 49694. So 49694 is associated with PID 4612. And it says we should use WMIC to kill the process. Well, that's quite easy to do. All we have to do is type WMIC process where process ID equals 4612. And then we'll say delete. And we can see here that it tells us that the instance deletion was successful. So we've killed the process. Now we'll press enter to continue. It says here that the PowerShell backdoor was easy to find because it listened on a TCP port. But a more typical PowerShell backdoor will not. It'll make periodic connections back to a C2 server. So 
now a process has been created, a PowerShell process specifically, that does not listen on a, a TCP port. What we can do is we can say WMIC process where name equals PowerShell.exe get PID or process ID, sorry. And we can see here that the process ID is 4876. So if we type that in, now it says to use WMIC to retrieve the command line and determine the flag that's displayed in that command line. Well, to do that, we can actually, instead of get process ID, we can do get command line, and we can actually see there's the PowerShell.exe line, and it appears here that we've got what looks like a base64 encoded string. We'll go ahead and copy that and go back to our bash environment, and we'll echo the string and pipe it through base64-d to decode it. And what we've got here is a string that starts with Sasquatch and then some random numbers. Now I can tell you that they don't want the spaces in here, so let's go ahead and strip that out, leaving us only with that. And let's go ahead and feed that in. So there's the answer. And now it says use WMIC to kill the process. Well, we know the process is 4876. So as before, we'll go back over here and we'll do WMIC process where process ID equals, what was it again? 4876. And we'll delete. And we can see here instance deletion successful again. So we've killed that process. By the way, we can use WMIC to connect to a remote machine and do the exact same thing using forward slash node. So WMIC is quite powerful. We can actually reach out and remotely kill a process on another machine. So we'll do that, and we have reached the end. It tells us we have done well. The evil hackers have been thwarted. Press enter to end the lab, and there we go. Don't forget to turn the Windows firewall back on. So again, we've walked through this pretty simple exercise, but there's some important information here. It specifically stresses how to live off the land or basically use the tools that are available to us at the command line uh, in not installing any kind of third-party tools. We can use WMIC and things of this nature to, to answer the questions. So very cool stuff. And again, uh, if you haven't done it, you might want to check out SCC 504. It's a very cool class available from SANS. Thank you very much.